This video is entitled PII, Compliance and Privacy, and goes along with Chapter 2 of our Project Management for Technology course. I'm Dr. Renault from Shawnee State University, and I'll be taking you through this video presentation. In this video, I'll be covering PII, which is an acronym for Personally Identifiable Information. I'll be discussing two different types of PII, sensitive PII and linkable data, which is also kind of, you can think of it as non-sensitive PII. We'll be talking about PHI or protected health information. And we'll just be talking about confidentiality, responsibilities that a, that a company and a project should hold and, and the possibilities and, and implications of, of breaching these, these privacy and security confidentiality issues. Personally Identifiable Information, or PII. PII is generally made up of, of two types of PII. PII called sensitive PII or linkable data, and there'll be slides on each of those. Personally identifiable information is defined by the National Institute of Standards and Technologies, NIST. And in the book, there's a link to um, a website and the documentation about those specific standards. The NIST standards define uh, what PII are, the frameworks, controls, and standards for how an ethical and, and how PII are to be properly handled by a system. The reason we're talking about this in a project management course is just to remind you that when we're creating any kind of project, whether it be uh, a software project, a hardware project, a networking project, or any other type of, of technical project, even if we're, we're building a building, we still need to, to worry about the leakage and, and the proper handling of PII. The first uh, type of PII I want to talk about is Sensitive Personally Identifiable Information, or SPII. These pieces of information can be used to track an individual's identity. For instance, their name, their social security number, their passport number, their driver's license number, their credit card numbers, their date and place of birth. Now, date of, of birth and place of birth independently aren't identifiable, but when you have them together, that links very closely to a single individual, a fingerprint, DNA markers, voice print, gate recognition. I mean, you can go on and on and on of all of the things that can be used to directly identify a person. You know, if somebody has these of yours, if somebody knows these, if somebody has access to these or has them on a flash drive, they can pretty well own you. They can open bank accounts, credit cards. They can open, uh, I mean, they can masquerade to be you. They can steal your identity. So these things are at least commit financial crimes against you. These, these bits of information are extremely sensitive. And, and a company should keep them only if they really, 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 really need them. Um, sometimes, though, you absolutely have to have them. For instance, uh, you're a, you're a school, you need the birthday, you need um, probably driver's license number, passport numbers, social security numbers, um, those types of things in, in your records. But as a commercial enterprise, as, an, as a small business, uh, how much of this do you really need to keep on file and to keep laying around? This is uh, risky stuff if you, if you, let, it, uh, if you let it out. The next type of PII is known as linkable data. Now, linkable data is not as sensitive, you know, just because of, of its name, that kind of by definition. It's things like address, phone, birthday, zip code, IP address, MAC address of, of a computer, which is the network adapter serial number, which your computer shares with websites place of birth, activities, names of children, schools you've attended. Uh, children are listed twice, but you might have more than one. Um, but uh, these are things that aren't directly identifiable. 
you know, a zip code. There are thousands of people that live in your zip code. Birthday, lots of people around the world share your birthday. But when you link these things together, maybe uh, racial heritage, gender, zip code, birthday, well, that would uniquely identify maybe one or two persons, wouldn't it? Um, notice that, that, again, birthday and place are separately, if they're linkable, but if they're linked together, then they can become identifying. So you put enough of these linkable data elements together, they can become identifying. How these are used matter. For instance, if you're reporting on aggregate data, summary data by zip code, and you've got dozens, a hundred customers in that zip code, then you're, you're getting a nice aggregate. What if you only have one customer in that zip code and you're reporting on data by zip code, then all of a sudden you could potentially identify somebody. Um, how much linkable data, you know, stop and think about yourself and how much linkable data you've disseminated on social media to friends or to friends uh, or others that could possibly be used to link these things together to identify you. You know, we know you went to this university on this date range. We know your 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 major was this. We know you graduated here. We know that uh, all of a sudden I can find a lot of information about you by linking those pieces of data together. There's another type of PII, which, which is called protected health information. And the reason that we use a different acronym for health information is that it's um, protected by the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act, or the HIPAA Act of 1996. And it regulates how data is kept and shared and secured by your physicians, hospitals, medical providers, pharmacies, and, and others. Um, health information, though, is health information that those individuals, your, like say your doctors, your pharmacists, your, your hospitals, your insurance companies, and others receive either writing or orally. Um, and they have to protect this data. The, the data can include past, present, or even future treatments for medical, mental health, uh, pharmaceuticals, and, and other things. And uh, there is a huge, huge liability to medical providers, insurers, and pharmacies to maintain and to be sure that this protected health information is kept um, secure. It's, it's, a, it's a huge thing. Now, annually, you receive a HIPAA statement from your medical providers. Probably comes in the mail. You probably don't even open it or you look at it and go, oh, it's just junk. Um, it is, but it, it states what they're going to do with your data. Uh, most of the times when you go to the doctor, the doctor will say, sign here for your privacy statement um, on the little, little pin pad. Have you ever read that privacy statement and what they're doing with your data? Because under HIPAA, they had to disclose all that to you. But have you ever read those disclosures? It's kind of eye-opening what, what they can do with that data without any additional permission because you gave the permission without reading that uh, the HIPAA statement. Um, but protected health information is just another type of PII that is collected, but is regulated in a in a more 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 severe manner uh, because of the the HIPAA law. Now I've been defining what PII is and PHI, um, and and I mentioned the NIST and the HIPAA rules that that go along with it and the regulations. Rules about uh, PII vary across the world and even state to state. Some states like California and New York have much more stringent uh, uh, PII rules than, than a lot of other states. There's also a, a regulation called the GDPR or the General Data Protection Regulation that any business, that any organization 
that does business with EU citizens has to comply with the GDPR. You'll see a lot of, of websites and a lot of places you go pop up a cookie statement and you get to choose whether the website keeps cookies or tracks you and how the website tracks you and how that data is used. The privacy policies that are included in websites and their links um, and that by using the website, you agree to the privacy policies and the data collection policies. Um, I don't know if you ever read that stuff, but, but again, you probably should. The GDPR is much more restrictive than the U.S.'s regulations. Um, and uh, if your business does business outside of the U.S., even if it's e-commerce outside of the U.S., you have to comply with the GDPR. So when you're designing a project, when you're building a new project, when you're a technology project, you need to be sure to, or any project that collects data, you need to be sure to, to be looking at this. Now, you know, if we're building buildings as our project or we're, we're, we're designing shopping malls or we're, or we're, we're building a factories, uh, maybe some of all of this doesn't apply, but you still have to deal with the PII that belongs to your employees, your vendors, your customers. Um, you still have to deal with the, the PII of the, of the people that are working on the project. So as a project manager, you really need to be aware of, of, of these factors. Our last slide just, just goes into confidentiality, and I've hit upon this in a lot of the previous slides. Remember, who's responsible for data? You are. You and your organization are responsible for the proper collection, dissemination, and protection of data. You know, when you're planning a project, especially a tech project, you must understand the PII you're collecting that you need. Don't collect anything you don't need. And understand the risks that you're putting your organization under by collecting that data. Now, what damage will be done to the company if the data is breached? Just exactly how much is this going to cost in dollars and reputation? There are some organizations that have lost hard drives full of information, and have they ever been able to recover the trust of the communities? I haven't been able to recover my trust, I'll tell you that. And then what laws are you violating? with your data collection practices and your data collection policies and uh, your sharing within an organization. So, so we need to be very, very cognizant, very aware, and very sure of what we're doing, why we're doing it, and how we're protecting our data. It's an extremely valuable asset, probably more of a liability than an asset. Jim Heldman's CompTIA Project Plus Study Guide Exam, PK0005, second, uh, third edition. Need to fix that slide. Um, from John Wiley and Sons, Indianapolis, was used as a reference for creating this video. I'd like to say thank you for watching. This presentation is copyright 2023 by James M. Renault, PhD. You can contact me at jreno at shawnee.edu, and I'll be more than happy to answer any general or even some specific questions. This work is licensed under Creative Commons Attribution, non-commercial share like 4.0 license. And again, I'd like to thank you for, for watching another one of these project management videos.